everyone welcome back to my channel so today's video it's a light elegance video and this is just all design all design all this beautiful abstract artwork this now i know I, I i just did it but here we are again with this reverse illusion french gradient ombre whatever we're calling it we have one hand that <laughs> And the other hand, like I said, just some fun abstract art, which was kind of freestyle and also inspired by somebody. So, yeah, I'll put that in the description bar who it was inspired by. So we're going to start off with the ombre hand. And I mix the just white buttercream with um, the backseat necking. I love that name. It's so old school. Like we was over there naked. <laughs> um, I mixed that together to get a lighter color pink just because I want to make sure that I had the same tone, the same undertone with the brighter pink and the lighter pink. Now, um, with this effect in this look, I think it's better. And I'm sure you've seen many and plenty of people do it on Instagram. And you might find that it's it looks a little better. Um, and catches the eye and gives that you know illusion look what you want when you have uh, more contrasting colors a darker deeper color or a brighter color and a softer lighter color contrasting whatever it is so my client wanted to keep this bright she wanted pink to happen so that's what we're doing so we decided to do you know i love to do two different hands that kind of you know match correlate these do they match and correlate color wise yes these pinks will appear in the other hand and just so you know i am using the gel polish brush from light elegance of course and i'm going in with this technique and i tried it a little different so like i said i just recently did a video and i'm sure you see many and plenty of people to do it i'm trying the actual vertical ombre part a little bit differently so what you'll see is i'm applying the lighter color first and um just to half of the nail that's it and i'm kind of fading it over to the opposite side however you're choosing to ombre i did these kind of a back and forth so it faded from the hot pink light pink light pink hot pink and you know so on and so forth so that's just how i did that so i'm applying this and getting the pigmentation i feel like i want to do this to get the pigmentation where i wanted it first the buttercreams have very good pigmentation. It's just with vertical ombres, you want to go in thin for that blend. So I was like, well, let's go ahead and apply it a little bit thicker for more pigmentation to start off with. Apply it, you know, the light pink and kind of fade it over one direction, cure it. Go ahead and apply the bright pink or the other color, kind of fade it over, blend it real once you try to blend it over, you need to lessen up on the product so it can fade a little better. So as you can see, as the nail I'm working on, I took that light pink over really far. But again, we are getting it blended, faded, we're getting coverage. Um, it's not something that I'm minding. I'm going in with a second coat over this nail. Again, I'm trying to get the pigmentation where I want it first and foremost. Because it's a with vertical ombre, they can be more tedious than they are literally difficult it's just mixing um but again i think it works better when you have less product when you're trying to do that blend when you're trying to blend from you know one color from the other obvious obviously um i always like to give the um, analogy you know if we have red on one side blue on the other side you want to blend you know get a nice purple in the middle so from red kind of blended into a reddish purple purple bluish purple and then you're blue you know so that's what we're trying to do is get a nice blend this lighter pink this brighter pink and trying to get a medium pink in the center but we're going to get a range of those same pink tones but that's what we're trying to do you know what i mean so i feel like it's easier with less product so i'm going ahead and applying like i said that product getting the pigmentation where i want especially around the cuticle area and everything like that because it can be a lot to try to work with we're trying to get this beautiful blend in the center and then we also like we need to get the pigmentation we got to make sure it's not too bulked up we want to make sure you know what i'm saying so i thought this would kind of lessen that heartache and 
I feel like it did. <laughs> um, I really do. I've done vertical ombres, I said many and plenty of times, on my channel. So this technique is just something I was trying just to see how I preferred. I just want to show you because, guys, I have that silicone mat down and I'm just wiping my brush off going back in and I have multiple um with this technique I recommend to have if you're able to have multiple brushes which I do but nonetheless you, you I'm just wiping off product wiping, wiping off excess product sometimes I'll forget which direction the brush is going as far as like the pink on the left side of the brush the bright pink on one side the light pink you know what I mean so if you're able to have two brushes it can be helpful so now I'm going in and applying I'll go in and apply and get that blend together now what you can do is take the color and I showed this on another video I do have the um and light elegance video of me doing a 3d weaved ombre um which is actually a little more difficult than this look this look seems tricky I'm sh again I'm sure you've seen all the, the videos on it it seems tricky but in reality, it's like I said, it's more tedious than it is difficult, I would say, especially when you're using good products, which is why I love the buttercreams. They have really good pigmentation, but they're their namesake. They are so creamy and so they blend together so very well, so smooth, as you can see. They just give a wonderful blend. So having good product is very important with this look. If you don't literally have, you know, buttercreams, something that is of similar viscosity if not the same actual product line you know what I mean so again I'm taking two buttercreams and actually it's the pink buttercream and the pink mixed with white so that back seat necking just straight for one side and then the other side like I said I mix that just white with that back seat necking so I got that blend how I wanted it to go Again, you can find some blending techniques on that 3D weaved ombre video, so definitely check it out. And um, you can kind of see how I use that um, brush, get one side loaded with one color, the other side loaded with the other color, and blend it on, you know, some type of mat. I use my silicone mat, um, whatever you have on hand to use to mix your colors um you know a tile or something whatever yeah <laughs> um so use that to kind of blend the colors on that mat first and then you can go ahead and apply it to the nail to get that fade so now I'm going in with the French design which actually is probably the easiest part to this at this point um the least time consuming at, at least <laughs> Um, so one side we take on the opposite where the hot pink, we take the lighter pink and vice versa. And we're just going to draw that French line. Now I do flip the client's hand over just to make sure it's straight, kind of clean it up. But you do have a little more wiggle room. I mentioned it in my last video. Um, the one you see that kind of purple blue ombre, if you didn't definitely check it out. I mean, it's very similar to what's happening here, but you know, why not? <laughs> so go ahead and draw one side. And I like to draw a little more product just so I can blend it down to get that full coverage on the tip. And um, just draw that French one half with the, your lighter color, one half with your darker color. You can see I'm kind of matching them up to make sure they look like sisters, not cousins. And I am using the, um, the dot light, the LED dot light from Ellie. <laughs> and um curing in between like I said these layers I am going to apply I don't get it on camera I am going to apply two coats on of the French just to make sure that pigmentation is there but honestly like I said it the French was the least tedious of this process once you get that first vertical ombre down I really think um that the rest will be a little bit more simple again you have a little wiggle room with the crispness of these lines a little bit just because there's a lot going on with the blend and everything so I just feel just because I'm somebody I like to have a nice crisp French I draw on a lot of Frenches um I'm sure you may have seen if you're not new here on this channel so as somebody who draws on a lot of Frenches I found that this didn't have to be as crisp now it does look nice and clean I'm not saying that I make sure it's balanced and everything but just there's some little minor little things you just don't have to worry about but you know I'm not trying to tell you how to not good do good nails but you know I'm just saying there's wiggle room <laughs> so you can see I 
I've drawn that on. I take that color where it is at the line and fade it down. That way I'm not disturbing the crisp line that I made. And the only reason, like I said, the buttercreams have great pigmentation. They're smooth. Um, it's just, I'm working in, you know, lighter layers trying to get that blend. So, um, a lot of times when I'm using buttercreams, just solid for a French, I don't even need a second coat, which is a breath of fresh air because who wants to one draw French on twice, you know, but with this look, I found it necessary just to make sure that my blend at the tip was together. Uh, I am using the stripey brush from the Selena Ryden collection, um, if I have not mentioned it already. And I'm just, like I said, over and over going in, drawing one half with one color, one half with the other. You can see I have the product thicker. The line that I'm literally drawing is thick with product. Again, that's so when I take that gel polish brush, I can grab some of that product and fade it down so I don't have to load a lot on my brush. You see how I'm just taking that product and fading it down, but my line can stay crisp because I put a good amount of product on there, drew a clean line. Again, so I'm taking the excess that has bulked up at that line and just fading it down. So that's my biggest tip for this look. Um, again, it's something I mentioned in the last video. Um, but I've, you know, honestly, this is only my second time doing this to a client in person it is tedious definitely if you are a licensed nail tech working on clients please charge accordingly for this for your time your effort yeah so i didn't catch it on camera for this whole set but i did use the flat mat it's like by the time i get to top coat i'm like oh, you know that's not exciting and i'm just trying to you know <laughs> flat matte you cured in the light i cured in the led light 60 seconds it does have a tacky layer on it so i just take um the light elegance pro cleanser lint free wipe and go ahead and wipe the tacky layer off so on the next hand again this is just art only um these nails are the full cover tips so those were applied again this is just a light elegance art throwdown set <laughs> So I'm going in, like I said, this was inspired by a set. I'm using Twilight Date Night Buttercream and still that Sharpie brush. This was inspired by a set. I'll put the text information in the description bar, like I mentioned earlier. And I call this kind of a freestyle based on that. Like it, it was somebody else did it. It's because I took the essence, the shapes, the kind of randomness. I took that into consideration, definitely had it for reference. And um, then I took those different elements. I kind of wanted to notice what made it look like it. I always say that, to have some type of form, some form of reference photo or something. So you know what you are trying to go for. What is the thing, especially when you're working I always say it with natural things and things like that things and things <laughs> um and what I mean by that like animal print marble things like that and this is none of that but nonetheless she had an inspiration photo this client um she has come back <laughs> to me she used to be a client pre-pandemic and she's come back and I've always appreciated her love for like abstract art and just things like this. <laughs> so um, I kind of seen, you know, based on her inspiration picture, like, what is it? What is this design that's making it look like it? So I took some elements. I seen the, the picture she had had about, I think, just the eight finger showing. I don't know about the thumb. So I just took different elements from those. We picked colors. Um, and this is that light pink that I used on that other hand. That was mixed just so you know so i used the light pink in that back seat necking that hot pink on this hand just to kind of tie it together so that's really where the cohesiveness comes um from with these two hands and it's just abstract it's fun whatever <laughs> so this is anchors away which is a beautiful blue and I'm going in and you see I'm filling in these bigger areas with that gel polish brush. Now for none of this except that pink swoop right here, what you're seeing, 
the pink swoop is the only thing semicircle whatever that is <laughs> that's the only thing I had to um double coat and it's it, it's again it's because it's on the edge I don't like to bulk up the nail if possible at all so I like to play it in thinner layers so that's the only reason that has two coats the rest of this one coat and how amazing is that because who I'm telling you when you start doing artwork like this the last thing you want to do is a second coat <laughs> um and, you know unless it needs it unless you have to but you don't want to have to so again another reason I love 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 the buttercreams you can kind of you know apply it how you want to if you want to apply it thinner um you can again if you're not familiar with the buttercreams you can kind of customize the viscosity it kind of loosens up the more you kind of mix it a little bit kind of you know mess with it stir it you don't want to make bubbles or anything nothing that dramatic um but you do have some little wiggle room. Buttercreams are very versatile. Um, they're, you can apply them like within the nail, within, like if you're encapsulating, if you're trying to do this design with different elements. You know, let's say we're trying to do this within the nail, but we want a gold leaf. We wanted, you know, some thicker little like metal decal things. Um, just we can definitely use this. I say that to say you can use this encapsulated inside of the nail. You can use it on the surface, full coverage. Um, and then you can also hand draw on artwork. I absolutely love to do artwork. And you probably, you guys probably like all the art you've done lately is like with buttercreams. And it's like, yeah, for good reason. <laughs> Especially, like I said, these blend vertical ombre type situations. The buttercreams work so well for that. As you can see, I'm trying to clean up this line. It kind of swooped over and I'm just real classy using my gloved hand. <laughs> so I'm taking, I'm trying to swing this around to kind of make a matching curve. Like I said, at this point, I'm just kind of winging it, seeing what needs to go where. Like I said, I have this inspiration picture and I'm trying to emulate certain aspects of it. Um, and then also kind of, you know, add my own for the most part, I have this variety of colors and I'm trying to use maybe not literally every single one on all the nails, but most of them. And I'm trying to be cautious and careful and consider where I'm applying these colors. What elements are they on the nail? Are they, you know, a bigger element are they just something like this in the corner you know kind of where is my yellow showing up we don't want it to be patterned or too perfect um but we want it to be purposefully kind of disorganized you know what i mean so i'm considering things like that when i'm applying this that i'm using is not a buttercream it is the neon yellow gel paint just so you know the rest of the colors are buttercreams with the exception of this color. But with that neon yellow, I only had to apply one coat. That's it. So this color, you may not be able to see the bottle. It's called All Hands on Deck. And it's actually the color I used in that previous kind of illusioned French um, double ombre situation. Um, it's a beautiful, it's like a, it's a royal, it's a unique color. It's kind of jelly-ish in a way. It kind of, um, but I don't mean that in a bad way at all. It blends really well. It has really good coverage, um, but it can, it, it's just like royal blue purple. Like it sits, it's a very blue toned purple um, that you may think it's blue. And especially in the last video, it looked very blue but when you put it next to that other blue that we have the actual buttercream one um you can see that it definitely pulls more purple and as you can see for the most part with this design i'm going to be using the stripey brush now if you're doing something 
that has a lot of like little swirls and things like that you may want to come down on your brush length you may want to use the swirly brush <laughs> it's its namesake it's in the selena write-in collection as well so you may want to use that for certain elements you may find it easier to use it because when you have a longer brush longer bristles you have to kind of swing them around and if you're <laughs> I was going to say, if your turn radius is, um, you know, not that large, not that wide, you may want a shorter brush to kind of take that task on. Um, because these kind of swirls, these curves are, you know, not real tight, not super close together, I felt comfortable using the regular stripey brush. Now, I may have given myself an easier time with like that little circle on the side of that neon yellow of this nail, just certain elements, but definitely take advantage of the different lengths of brush to know when to use them. So you can see I added those random little dots. I used the, um, the daughter tool from my elegance of course i really like that they have different sizes i think that one's called like the needle one it's very fine and i just used it kind of swirled around to make some bigger dots medium smaller i didn't want it to look too organized as you can see um again doing some bigger ones smaller ones you can definitely use the different size of the stylus the daughter stylus whatever you want to call it is this is their number one but like i said they have different sizes so you can definitely use different size to create different size dots those bigger ones um but i was just using what was on hand i recently relocated and i have some stuff packed up i have not found yet so I'm making do <laughs> so as i mentioned i'm not trying to make this look too perfect with these dots i'm not trying to make it what i mean is like arranged i don't want them equal distance equal size in a pattern i want it to look random and everything like that again it's something that i took away from the original inspiration design it's just like some things just didn't have a rhyme or a reason which can actually be kind of hard to do depending on how you work with art how you take instruction how you you know work on a task so for me personally i can find it a little difficult because you know although this is art i'm a person who loves science math things that make sense you know <laughs> math always answers itself it always checks out you know for the most part <laughs> um and art is just kind of you know it's a lot of your interpretation i always say art is interpretation and sometimes when you have just you know, the possibility is endless, you get kind of like decision anxiety. And it's like, I could do anything on these nails, you know, even with the inspiration picture, like I could, you know, I could take this however I want to, I could do a swirl right here. I cannot, I could do this line. I could put dots in here. I can do a little hatch mark. You know what I mean? So it's kind of, it can make it a little difficult. So trying to find balance, showing, you know, my own personality when to put things considering the inspiration um and trying to make this a cohesive design that's everything that i'm considering with this so it looks you know random haphazard but it's intentionally that way almost to the point that it becomes difficult at times <laughs> I don't say, it's not literally difficult but again in a world full of like you could do anything you're like okay so what do i do <laughs> and then you like freeze up so having the inspiration picture definitely helps but again trying to also add your own thing your twist freestyle at some point i put the picture away and i'm just like okay you know what's happening we have some you know very hard edge in organic shapes um very geometric with the triangle certain hard angles we do have some of those but we also have nice long swirls we have you know random dots inside certain elements hat random hatch marks um i don't know if this is literally inspired by anything the original photo you know what i mean i don't know if it was an outfit cool jacket from the 80s i don't know um so it may you know inspiration is lives it, it it morphs um like i said that person could have been inspired by something they literally have and now i 
I've just taken it and got inspiration to kind of flip it and do it as something else, you know, not completely, but just kind of reimagine certain elements to it. So again, I'm trying to add certain, to make sure those colors are kind of evenly dispersed across, you know, the five nails on that hand. Um, considering the four nails that you see most of the time and then like I said certain elements that make it look like it one of my favorite things I want to make sure I included at least one yellow piece with the black dots which I did on the previous nail I'm like that in the mix it has to happen so I made sure I added that and again I'm working like this pinky was probably the last one I'm like what do I do with this so I'm just kind of winging it I, and this might not be seem like a big deal to you, but I outlined this pink box and I'm like, oh, does that mess up the aesthetic? Does that mess up the aesthetic now that it's outlined? And I just went with it. I think in the inspiration picture, I think I've seen a little something to the side where it did. And I'm like, oh, does this make sense kind of outline? Because it makes it look different, kind of like cartoony in a graphic way it kind of changes it slightly to me but I'm probably just overthinking it also <laughs> um but I think I, up, I, I became fine with it so now I'm just adding those different elements like I said the inspiration she had random hatch marks dots literal like you see this hot pink dot um just random things like that and then the little hatch marks and I think it's just real fun at the end of the day this was a fun, fun set to do just to have kind of some of that freedom. It was hard to let go, but at the end of it, I really enjoyed it to the point. I just want you to know I recorded all this artwork on this hand in one solid thing and it took me 59 minutes. This was an hour of drawing and I didn't get it all. I didn't get top coat and I didn't get the thumb, but I edited out some as much as I could, sped it up. And this is our final look. Like I said, I used the flat mat to top coat all of these i'm sorry i didn't get the footage but it's just that we cured it wiped off the tacky layer i applied the light elegance cuticle oil and then this is our final look i like the cleansing nails with the um lint free wipe and the le pro cleanser it just gets that excess oil off the nail and brings back that matte look um you can also use acetone if you want to as well So you guys, our emoji today is going to be like the cool, you know, the emoji, the the one with the cool glasses, the cool guy, but the cool guy down below because these are cool. <laughs> um, he's yellow. He has the black shades. Um, Go ahead and put him down below because, you know, I, I give you this beautiful content and I just need a comment, a like and an emoji. It helps the algorithm and, we you know, the algorithm is what it is. That's who we do this for. <laughs> no, that's all for you guys. Um, I really appreciate you for watching. And I thank Light Elegance, of course. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching. Bye.